Good morning. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to everyone, including those watching online to our service here in First Armagh on Sunday the 14th of April. I've just got a few announcements. Um, our next prayer meeting is this coming Wednesday the 17th of April, starting at 8 p.m. And should anyone like to make a a re prayer request. There is a box available in the vestibule. Just pop your request in there. Next Sunday, the 21st of April at 6 p.m., we have an evening of favourite children's hymns, and the service will be led by Matt Ball. Voting sheets are still available in the vestibule and choir room, and you can list up to eight of your favourite hymns or choruses. However, these need to be returned today. The eight that receive the most nominations will then be included. But please remember, the service starts at 6 p.m. Tassa Silver Band, who recently uh, accompanied the singing on the steps at the front of our church, they're holding a variety concert on Saturday night, the 20th of April, in Armagh Orange Hall at 7.30 p.m. And everybody is very welcome to come along. Uh, guest appearances uh, from Desi Murcroft uh, from our choir, and uh, he will accompany the band on the bagpipes. So please come along to that. And next Sunday morning, it's our communion service, and that will be led by the very Reverend Dr. David Clark. But this morning, we welcome back Trevor Canning to lead our worship. Trevor, thank you, and we look forward to hearing your message. Our call to worship this morning comes from a Psalm of David, Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's praise his name in our opening hymn, IPH number 222. O oh, God beyond all praising, we worship you today and sing the love amazing that songs cannot repay.
Let us pray. Our gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, creator of this world, governor of the universe, righteous judge, your greatness is unsearchable, your compassion unfailing, your mercies new every morning. We come into your presence today acknowledging that we are a rebellious and broken people. We come with hearts full of thankfulness and praise. Thankful for your word that gives spiritual direction to our daily lives, for your commitment to us even when we wander from your ways, for your firm no when we need to hear it, for your wise wait when we are rash and impatient, for your encouraging yes when we lack the faith to trust you, for your spirit that enlightens our eyes to the truth of the gospel, for your grace that removes our guilt and sin. Thank you, Lord, for all you are. Thank you, Lord, for all you do. Thank you, Lord, for all you say. Forgive our foolish actions, words and deeds, for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer, in whose precious and worthy name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 10 and will be read for us by Chris Boyd. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples, together with the large crowd, were leaving the city. A blind, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Boys and girls, I have a question for you this morning. And the question is this. Do you know what a shoe is? Now, I'd be surprised if you said you didn't recognize this as a shoe, but I'm not talking about this type of shoe, nor to the bakers amongst us am I talking about shoe pastry, which I know little or nothing about apart from eating it and enjoying it, but I'm talking about a shoe that looks something like this. Shoe, 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 shoe. Now I'm going to try and put this shoe back on again and if I hobble down the church at the end you'll know I didn't manage to get it back on. So we're going to find out this morning about some people who said shoe, shoe. Boys and girls, Chris read for us from Mark chapter 10 about the healing of a blind man. But not long before Jesus healed the blind man, some parents wanted their children to meet Jesus. So I'm going to read to you a short story from a children's Bible, and I want you to listen carefully and find out who was stopping the children from getting near Jesus. Who was shooing them away? Here's the story. 
Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. People were bringing little children to Jesus. They wanted him to place his hands on them and bless them. But the disciples told them to stop. When Jesus saw this, he was angry. He said to his disciples, let the little children come to me. Don't keep them away. God's kingdom belongs to people like them. What I am about to tell you is true. Anyone who will not receive God's kingdom like a little child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms. He placed his hands on them to bless them. So the question again, who told the children to stop? Who tried to shoo them away? Yeah. You know who it was, don't you? It was the disciples. The disciples told the children to stop. So why did the disciples want to chase the children away? Well, perhaps the children were crying, or perhaps they were yelling and they were very, very noisy, or perhaps they were very, very badly behaved. Perhaps the disciples thought that the children weren't as important as the adults. You see, the Bible doesn't tell us why the disciples wanted to stop the children getting near Jesus. The adults who had brought the children wanted Jesus to bless those children. But the disciples tried to stop the children being brought to Jesus. And Jesus was annoyed. Jesus was annoyed, but not with the children. Boys and girls, Jesus was annoyed with the adults. He was annoyed with the adults. And he told the adults off. He told the disciples off. Jesus knew that the children were being treated unfairly by the disciples. The adults should have known better. The adults should have known better. The disciples should have known better. They should have known that Jesus always has time for children. It doesn't matter whether you're well-dressed or you're in your oldest clothes. It doesn't matter whether you're well-behaved or you're rowdy. It doesn't matter if you're chatty or quiet. Jesus loves you, and he loves to see you coming to church, and he loves to see you watching the services online, and he wants you to know that he died on the cross for you to take the punishment for the wrong things that you and I have done. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we pray that you will bless each boy and girl in this congregation and help us as adults always to welcome them and show them the love of Jesus. Bless the children at home, at school, and at play. Bless parents and carers. Help them to teach the children about Jesus and his wonderful love for each of them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The children's hymn is IPH 559, If I Come to Jesus. Let's Praise God.
children will now leave for junior church. offering will now be received. Let us pray. Our gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, we bless you for your bounteous provision and readily acknowledge that you are the good and perfect giver. We pray that you would bless the offering received today and that given through bank transfer. Use these gifts to bring glory and honor to your great name and for the extension of your kingdom locally here in the city of Armagh and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to our prayers of intercession, there will be a moment or two during those prayers when there will be a silence and you will be able to remember by name those known to you who are in particular need at the present time, those who are sick or those who have other specific needs, perhaps known only to you and a few other people. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we pour out our love and worship to you in our prayers for others and for ourselves. We acknowledge that you, the living God, are totally self-sufficient, not needing anything from us. You grant us life and breath and everything we possess is out of the abundance of your grace. You are majestic, mighty, merciful, and mindful of each one of us. You are the creator and sustainer of life, our redeemer. 
we thank you that we can bring our needs before you, knowing that you both hear and answer our prayers. This morning, confident in the fact that you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, we pray for those affected by devastating floods in Russia and Kazakhstan. Floods caused by heavy rainfall compounded by high seasonal temperatures resulting in rapidly melting snow and ice. Comfort the bereaved and grant safe passage to those currently being evacuated. May your hand of protection rest upon the emergency services and those seeking to bring much needed and urgent relief in such a dangerous environment. Grant wisdom to political leaders deciding strategies related to both rescue and future relief and support in rebuilding these devastated communities. Father, once again, we pray for the critical situation in the numerous war-torn countries throughout the world. Regularly in the media, we learn of the appalling loss of life, horrendous injuries, hostages being held captive, and devastation to property. We pray for the families of those killed, bring them your comfort and strength, and bring your healing touch to those who have been injured in body, mind, or spirit. Grant wisdom and understanding to world leaders who are working for justice and peace. We remember those known to us who are lonely, infirm, those anxiously waiting for a medical appointment, those perplexed about their future because of test results, those who mourn the loss of someone dear to them, those with special needs and those in despair due to fractured relationships. In the silence now, help us to bring them before you, seeking your healing touch, comfort, and strength. Gracious Father, in your great love and tender mercy, hear and answer our prayers. In these days of uncertainty, still our hearts. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days when we are in despair, grant us your presence bringing hope. Father, we commit these prayers, both spoken and silent, to you in and through the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We praise God again with that beautiful hymn by John Newton, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Let's praise God.
let us pray. Gracious Father, we pray that you will give us the enabling power of the Holy Spirit to understand your word this morning in a way which is life-changing. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Quite often when we read stories in the Bible, we read them in isolation. And it's good for us every now and again to ask the question, why were the people there and what were they doing? We know that for Jesus, he has set his heart resolutely to go to Jerusalem. And he knows what he faces there. He faces crucifixion and death. And he has already told his disciples about this. But what about the rest of the crowd? Where were they going? Well, the majority of the crowd was probably on an 18-mile trek from Jericho to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Jericho to Jerusalem. That's a journey that we've read about before in the Bible, isn't it? We've read about going from Jerusalem to Jericho Yes, that's the story about the man who was journeying on this very road when he fell among thieves, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Oh, you know the story so well. It's the most familiar of stories in the Bible. He was, the man was beaten up and robbed, passed by by two important church folk before being rescued by the Good Samaritan. And how could the disciples forget the meaning of the parable, to love your neighbor as yourself? Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus' question from that parable must have been deeply imprinted in their minds. Who proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among thieves? Who proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among thieves? The one who showed him mercy. And then the command, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. In other words, go and show mercy. But what is mercy? Mercy is loving those who don't deserve it and cannot earn it. Mercy is loving those who don't deserve it and cannot earn it. We're going to look at this story under three headings. The miserable man, the mean people, and the merciful Messiah. Let's turn to our first point the miserable man. The miserable man in this story is not hard to identify. It's Bartimaeus. Bar means son of Bartimaeus. Scripture tells us he was the son of Timaeus in the same way as the Mac in MacDonald or MacDermot, the son of Donald, the son of Dermot. doesn't tell us how Bartimaeus came to be there on the road. Perhaps a family member or a friend left him there at that point on the road to beg. It should prove to be a very, very good place to beg on that particular day because there was lots and lots of footfall with many religious people passing by on their way to Jerusalem 
to celebrate the feast of the Passover. And Bartimaeus was hoping that as he called out for alms, many would be compassionate, and they'd throw in a few coins into his cloak, the cloak that he had spread in front of him. Easton's Bible dictionary defines the cloak as an exterior tunic wide and long, reaching down to the ankles, but without sleeves. You may well say boring, but not the next bit. The cloak was a precious and greatly valued piece of clothing, often used as a blanket at night, a precious and greatly valued piece of clothing often used as a blanket at night. Sometimes we ask the question, how is the Old and the New Testament related together? And then we get those wonderful glimpses when we can see how they're related. And here, it's no different this morning. We read in Exodus chapter 22, verses 26 and 27, and I have to say, I wasn't familiar with these verses. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, return it by sunset, because that cloak is the only covering your neighbor has. What else can they sleep in? When they cry out to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. What a promise for us from God. When they cry out to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. Clearly, as Bartimaeus sat by that dusty roadside, he was well aware of Old Testament scripture. I wonder, was he familiar with that verse from Exodus? But I also wonder, was he familiar with the words of 2 Samuel seven sixteen, where God promised David, your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever promise of a Messiah. But Bartimaeus must have known of the wonderful healing miracles which Jesus had performed. Perhaps he'd heard about Jesus in the synagogue in Nazareth when he read from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. Sight for the physically blind and the spiritually blind. But the wonderful thing is when Jesus sat down, he said to all in the synagogue, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. In plain language, Jesus said, Isaiah was speaking about me as the Messiah. Jesus said, I am the Messiah. I'm the one being spoken of here in the book of Isaiah. And when Bartimaeus cried out, he didn't cry out in the words of the crowd who told them that Jesus of Nazareth was coming. Note he doesn't say Jesus of Nazareth. He doesn't call that out. He calls out this, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he was clearly witnessing to all within earshot that Jesus of Nazareth was indeed the Messiah, the Savior of the world. I wonder, was Bartimaeus disheartened when he heard that Jesus was about to pass by? Bartimaeus, unlike the paralytic man who had four friends, you know that lovely story, they carry him through the streets, 
and had such resolve that they removed the roof to enable their friend to be lowered into the presence of Jesus. Imagine if the service was stopped today because bits and pieces came falling from the ceiling and we discovered somebody was working their way through the roof. That's exactly what happened on that particular day in that house and the man was lowered down into the presence of Jesus and Jesus healed the man there and then. But Bartimaeus had no supportive friends to hand. In fact, many in the crowd were to prove to be obstructive to his cries for help. And what about Bartimaeus? Did he give up hope? If he couldn't walk to Jesus, nothing was going to prevent him from crying out to Jesus. And well above the hubbub of the crowd, his fervent one-sentence prayer rang out. It's a one-sentence prayer. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's now time to consider our second point, the mean people. And this shrill request from Bartimaeus pierced the air and provoked a very swift reaction from many in the crowd. They wanted to silence his shout for help. Be quiet. It probably was shut up. I wonder, had I been there that day, would I have wanted to silence Bartimaeus or would I have wanted to help him? And what was the reaction of the disciples? Well, we can well say that the disciples only heard him call out once, so before they had a chance to do anything, Jesus was in there and he did something. But that's not what Scripture tells us. Scripture tells us that Bartimaeus cried out again and again and again in a loud voice. And what of the reaction of the disciples? They didn't react to Bartimaeus' cries. They did nothing to help him. They didn't even lift a single finger to help. And were the disciples guilty of being blind to loving their neighbors? Was this a sin of omission? The opportunity to do good, and they did absolutely nothing. And what about Bartimaeus? Was he eventually silenced? Never. Thank God his shrill cry for help went on and on and on and on. Scripture tells us he shouted all the more. He shouted all the more. And who responded with amazing love and compassion? Our fine point confirms it was the merciful Messiah. And above the hubbub of the crowd, Jesus heard the earnest prayer of Bartimaeus. And if you take nothing away from this service today, bar these eight words, let them ring in your ear. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Bartimaeus didn't mind who heard his anxious cry. It was an anxious cry for help. Perhaps this morning you feel that you can't pray because your words aren't elegant enough to approach a holy and righteous God. A prominent preacher tells of a lady who confronted him at the end of a service. Disdainfully, she informed him 
that there were a total of four grammatical mistakes in his opening prayer. He politely replied, this is, I wouldn't worry about that. I wasn't speaking to you. It's not the correctness of the spoken word that matters. Rather, it's the longing of the heart of the one who speaks those words to God, whether it's in a shout, softly or silently. God knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Let's learn from that brief eight-word prayer of desperation from Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And by shouting again and again and again, Bartimaeus repeatedly affirmed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the promised Savior of the world. But notice Jesus didn't ask Bartimaeus what he knew about Presbyterian church doctrine, what he knew about atonement or justification or sanctification. He didn't ask Bartimaeus when was the last time he went to the temple or when was the last time he celebrated the feast of the Passover. Let's examine how Jesus responds. Jesus stopped what he was doing. How often do we really stop what we're doing to give people our full attention? Jesus stopped what he was doing. And he focused on the needs of this destitute individual, this poor, blind beggar. And with a two-word command, he silenced the rebuking words from many in the crowd. Call him. Call him. And the crowd standing near Bartimaeus. Isn't it wonderful how they changed their tune? They no longer told Bartimaeus to be silent. They told him, he's calling you. And what was Bartimaeus' reaction? Immediately he cast off that precious cloak, the cloak which kept him warm on the chilly nights, the cloak which when he was begging he lightly spread out before him as the receptacle into which coins would have been tossed by passers-by. And leaving the precious cloak, he jumps to his feet and came to the Savior. Scripture is full of surprises, isn't it? The crowd must have been bewildered by the question which Jesus asks Bartimaeus. What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus responds respectfully, Rabbi, teacher, I want to see. And by faith, Bartimaeus receives his sight immediately. This morning, Jesus asks us that question. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us, Now without faith, it's impossible to please God, since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards him. Note Bartimaeus had these two things. Firstly, he had faith in Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And even though that faith may have been as tiny as a mustard seed, it was faith. And secondly, Bartimaeus had an expectation of his reward for seeking him. Note, it's not our reward. It's his reward. It's what he decides to give us. And sometimes we're not satisfied with what God gives us. But remember, whatever he gives us, he gives us for our good. 
So it's not our reward. It's his reward. And Bartimaeus believed that Jesus was the Messiah sent from God who could open the eyes of the blind. And Jesus declared to Bartimaeus, go, your faith has healed you. And no wonder Bartimaeus rejoiced as he followed Jesus down the road. And as for the disciples, they had time to reflect on their earlier behavior when they had mistreated parents and children by seeking to deny the children a blessing from Jesus. We read about this with the children in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. And now in the closing verses of Mark 10, we read about yet another missed opportunity to help. And was this failure due to the disciples' indifference to the immediate needs of Bartimaeus? Bartimaeus' repeated shouts for help had been repeatedly ignored by the crowd, which included the disciples, which included the disciples. The disciples had heard Bartimaeus and his impassioned pleas for help. It was Jesus alone bids Bartimaeus to come. As Christians, we could so easily say, I'm glad I don't share that careless attitude demonstrated by the disciples. We need to ask God to search our lives and make us aware of our shortcomings and our need for his mercy and his grace. Perhaps this morning you're here and you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. And you're asking, what did God do for me that I should call out for mercy? God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And in his mercy, God the Father sent Jesus from the glory of heaven to this earth to die on the cross, suffering God's judgment for our sins, receiving our punishment so that we can be adopted into his family and receive everlasting life. Give thanks today that we have indeed a gracious God, a gracious God who is rich in mercy. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your holy and inspired word for our learning. By your Holy Spirit, enable and empower us to identify the needs of others and equip us to provide the relevant support to meet those needs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing praise, hymn number 552. Take my life and let it be all your purpose, Lord, for me. Consecrate my passing days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Let's praise God together.
Let us pray. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.